Is Stack Overflow's partnership with OpenAI the end of Stack Overflow? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief, kicking off with today's AI headline news. Yesterday, Stack Overflow and OpenAI announced a new partnership. On an announcement blog post, Stack Overflow wrote, Today the companies announced a new API partnership that will empower developers with the collective strengths of the world's leading knowledge platform for highly technical content with the world's most popular LLM models for AI development. So what does this partnership include? Well, one piece of it is that OpenAI will have access to Stack Overflow's Overflow API product and will, quote, collaborate with Stack Overflow to improve model performance for developers who use their products. The goal here is to help OpenAI improve its models using, quote, enhanced content and feedback from the Stack Overflow community while also providing attribution to that community. Indeed, they say OpenAI will surface validated technical knowledge from Stack Overflow directly into ChatGPT, giving users easy access to trusted, attributed, accurate, and highly technical knowledge and code backed by the millions of developers that have contributed to the Stack Overflow platform for 15 years. The other part of the partnership is that Stack Overflow will utilize OpenAI models as part of the development of their own Overflow AI. Now, this is a notable partnership for a couple of different reasons. Stack Overflow has been largely seen by many to be one of the chief victims of the AI era. The chart that's currently on the screen shows the decline of Stack Overflow's traffic, going back all the way to the release of GitHub Copilot in October 21, but especially accelerating with the release of ChatGPT in November of 2022. Between a peak of around 20 million daily page views in the 2020 to 2021 era, down to around 14 million in the wake of the release of Copilot, and going all the way down to 10 million, or half of their previous traffic, by July of 2023. Francesco writes, So it finally happened. Stack Overflow announced its partnership, Surrender, with OpenAI. I have mixed feelings about that and haven't used Stack Overflow in a while, and it always seemed like a useful but toxic place, especially for beginners. Commenter Saba Kisi writes, Partnership or they'll die. No other option on the table. I have barely used Stack Overflow since ChatGPT was released. While the feelings were mixed for some, they were decidedly less mixed for others. A UI programmer at Epic Games tweeted, Stack Overflow announced that they are partnering with OpenAI, so I tried to delete my highest rated answers. I found that Stack Overflow does not let you delete questions that have accepted answers and many upvotes because it would, quote, remove knowledge from the community. So instead, I changed my highest rated answers to a protest message. Within an hour, mods had changed the questions back and suspended my account for seven days. Ben goes on, I'm requesting that my questions and answers be permanently deleted under GDPR. It's just a reminder that anything you post on any of these platforms can and will be used for profit. It's just a matter of time until all your messages on Discord, Twitter, etc. are scraped, fed into a model, and sold back to you. Lucille Danilov retweeted Ben's message and wrote, Be good guy dev. Contribute to Stack Overflow for years. Suddenly, Stack Overflow decides to sell out to OpenAI and scrape your data for no compensation. Protest against it by changing your highest rated answer, get banned, and have your original answer forcibly reinstated. How is this legal? Nick's Craft writes, Everyone should immediately stop contributing to the Stack Overflow and its network. The human touch is what made it unique. Delete your profile from SO and all your answers. Freeloaders are making money out of human contributors. OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google together kill the open web. Thousands of independent blogs and forums are now nowhere in search engines or pushed back to page two to support their AI and partnerships with Reddit, Stack Overflow, and more. Many humans contributed to these sites hoping to build a knowledge base for humanity, but now greedy people like Sam Altman and OpenAI are taking over everything. I share these not because I think they're the right take, but just to show how intensely people feel about this. It is a complicated issue that is completely uncomplicated for some. I think it's an indicator of the portion of the developer community, and indeed probably the larger community, that feels like any form of AI training is just another word for theft. At the same time, however, this sort of deal with publishers, where it's not so much about OpenAI getting access to their data, but OpenAI actually attributing things to them as well, seems to be the way the winds are blowing. Right now, it's kind of split between newspapers, for example, who are suing OpenAI and newspapers who are cutting these deals, and I think that pretty well demonstrates the particular bifurcation of this moment. Now, speaking of OpenAI, The Information is reporting that two senior OpenAI executives have left the company. Those include Vice President of People Diane Yoon and Head of Nonprofit and Strategic Initiatives Chris Clark. I'm always a little skeptical of this type of story. Especially in the technology space, people move between companies all the time. Executives leaving a company doesn't necessarily mean that something bad is going on in that company. It could be for any number of personal reasons. It could be because these folks were able to cash out some chunk of what they had vested with that tender offer at an $86 billion valuation. Of course, what the press tends to notice is when there seems to start to be a pattern. The information, for example, connects this to OpenAI co-founder Andre Karpathy leaving earlier this year, and there are some other notable departures as well. But for now, it feels to me more like the natural ebbs and flows of people in and out of OpenAI rather than a smoke signal that something really bad is going on. Finally today, some announcements in the Apple and chip world. 
First, Apple has unveiled its latest iPad Pro, and it's the first time that we're seeing its new M4 chip. During the presentation, Tim Millett, the vice president of platform architecture at Apple, said, With this level of performance, the neural engine in M4 is more powerful than any neural processing unit in any AI PC today. As Reuters writes, Debuting its latest chip in a tablet rather than its Mac laptops is unusual for Apple, and suggests it is eager to give app makers a head start creating AI-related software ahead of its annual software developer conference next month. Continuing, they write, Precisely what AI features the new M4 chips could power might not become clear until June 10th at Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference, where it often shows new capabilities for Siri, its voice assistant, as well as the rest of its operating systems. Ben Bajaran, the chief executive of consulting firm Creative Strategies, said of the announcement, Essentially, there was a lot of foreshadowing on where they can go or will go with generative AI on their hardware. So we have this one official announcement, but then we also got a report from the Wall Street Journal that Apple has also been working on custom chips to run AI in data centers. According to reports, the server project is internally codenamed Project ACDC, which stands for Apple Chips in Data Center. The journal writes Project ACDC has been in the works for several years, and it is uncertain when the new chip will be unveiled, if ever. For now, it's mostly just being taken as yet another sign that Apple is indeed quietly working on AI stuff and that the market should price it as such. However, that is going to do it for the headline section of today's AI Daily Brief. Next up, the main part of the episode. 